Hi, this is Lori Drabble, a professor at San Jose State University School of Social Work. And um, in this presentation, we're going to review some of the core elements of research from the perspective of working in partnership with community members or community agency. So how does it work? What we'd like to do here is to review a little bit about how community-engaged research functions um, at each stage of the research process, and a little bit about the role of community partners in each stage. So the stages of the research um, project um, involve developing research questions, or the why of the project, designing procedures and instruments, or how, collecting data, the what of projects, coding and analyzing the data, or how much, disseminating and thinking about what happens to the results. Many of these stages also apply to uh, community projects um, in terms of designing and implementing projects and um, integrating an evaluation component of those projects. So just to walk through um, each of these different stages and considering involvement of community partners. So, in general, when thinking about the research question, it's useful to think about the research question as emerging from practice or thinking about a research question that's going to matter to practice um, because we are looking at practice-centered questions. It's also helpful to consult with the people who are engaged um, in service delivery or who are directly affected by those kinds of questions or your topic of interest. It's important to be balanced with theoretical and literature review um, when thinking about your research approach or your research questions. And a community-engaged research question will likely be asked because communities want to know the answer to improve practice or to address a health concern. Concern. Consequently, um, community engagement in thinking about the development of and refining of those questions is often very valuable. Community-engaged research has the opportunity to address health disparities and maintain a social justice framework by including those affected in the research process. The next thing to consider is the design of the research project. The research design is always based on the research question or questions. It may include qualitative or quantitative methods, and you must remember that it's helpful to consider whether these methods will be feasible and acceptable to partners in the community. It's imperative that you receive community buy-in for your project, or it may not be successful. Um, and finally, it's important to consider the burden to participants and the constraints of the research setting. We're always, of course, concerned and prioritize the quality of the research, um, but in partnered research projects, we're also always attentive to the impact and the um, capacity of the partners that we're working with. So a couple of examples include working with community partners to define the overall design of a research project. For example, working together to figure out what overall approaches and specific methods might help answer the question, um, again, including quantitative methods such as surveys or using existing data um, from client files or databases that may already be accessible, um, or qualitative methods such as conducting qualitative interviews or focus groups. Um, another example would be working with partners to even develop new tools. For example, in one case, we worked with a community partner to develop a survey for clients that was based both on the research literature and on focus groups with clients and direct line staff. And they have now been using that tool um, to evaluate their program. So. One of the major stages of research projects involves data collection. In this context, 
the research needs to focus on the logistics of the collection of data and the role of the partners and community members. Remember, it's important to keep them engaged in every stage of the research project. Research team members must be sensitive to community concerns and history about um, experiences in data collection. So, Partners and community members might be involved in the actual data collection, determining if and how data might be collected in practice settings, evaluating whether instruments are culturally sensitive and relevant, providing input in terms of how those instruments might be changed to become more appropriate, um, determining if measures are valid for the community, and again, um, research members should be sensitive to any community concerns that might arise. So in terms of um, participants, community um, members are often involved in helping to recruit participants in um, studies. In community-engaged research, community members um, are often involved in identifying recruiting participants, and in this context, researchers must ensure that communications with partners and participants at every phase are clear, respectful, and should consider both the study and the long-term university community relationships. These relationships often continue beyond the research project if community members are kept engaged and certainly if community members um, feel respected and honored in that process. In the analysis and interpretation stage, um, it's also important to think about engaging community. Community stakeholders may be involved in suggesting analyses, reviewing findings, or interpreting uh, some of the findings. Community research partners can report if results make sense to them, um, and one way of doing that is through a member check process, i.e. Uh, reporting back some preliminary results and seeing um, if those results resonate and seem valid. And at minimum, research teams generally identified venues for reporting back to key stakeholders. Examples include working as a team with uh, university, which includes student and faculty teams, and community members of a team to review and interpret findings. So rather than having, for example, student work in complete isolation to interpret findings, there are other individuals that are part of that student team, faculty members, and often community members who are helpful in really thinking about reviewing and interpreting the findings. Another example is presenting preliminary findings to study participants or stakeholder groups to verify the trustworthiness of the findings or consider implications for practice when writing up those findings. The final stage is often dissemination of research findings. This is where you think about how you're going to disseminate the results of your research. How might findings be disseminated to inform practice and future research? What are the audiences to reach? Um, what are the best strategies and formats for sharing information? It's important to think of this at the beginning of the project and not wait until the last minute to make these kinds of decisions. It's important to consult with community members as well. They might have some suggestions for you or your research team. For more information or resources about community-engaged research, please feel free to refer to any of these websites. This presentation was produced by the Child Welfare Partnership for Research and Training, a project of the SJSU School of Social Work. And for more information about the CW part, you can contact local faculty. And again, um, these principles are relevant not just to the CW part, but to any kind of partnered research model. And we wish you the best in your partnered endeavors.